the sound of my voice. Walk to my voice. stands for that uh, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and high-yield explosives enhanced response force package. The intent for the uh, SURF-P is to have a capability for the governor that uh, encompasses both uh, search and extraction, decon, medical, and a C2 element. Uh, the entire team is 186 soldiers and airmen that we have available to use for a, any type of incident that may happen in our state chemical, building collapse, uh, terrorist activity, uh, we provide that capability for the governor. And now, there's 17 surf peas in the United States, and I believe Missouri is the last surf pea to be exeval validated. So what happens is every, there's a requirement for every, once you complete your validation, you, you have to be validated within a two to three year window of your previous exeval. So for our case, we'll be, uh, our exeval is 18 March so of 2009, so our next exeval window would basically be 18 March 2011 to 18 March 2012. How that works is that National Guard Bureau, uh, they have a team that comes out, they're called JIDIC, out of West Virginia. The JIDIC folks bring in their subject matter experts uh, we have folks here from Army North helping with the decon line. Uh, they bring that capability in and will be evaluated by the JIDIC folks. Once, once what happens at that point, uh, the JIDIC folks will come back and they'll make a recommendation that either your team is a go or no-go. And we'll take our metrics, we, we, we'll provide the metrics on a letter and we'll provide it up to the chief of staff through the TAG. The TAG is a final approving authority if, you're, if your team is validated or not. Well, it's important to not only Missouri, but surrounding states also that we have compact agreements with. It, it's important to have a team ready to go at any sign of a disaster or need that is beyond the uh, response capabilities of the local first responders. So we want to make sure that we're there able to assist civilian authorities because that's what our job is as the Missouri National Guard. Sure, I'm the NCOIC of the C2 element, which stands for Command and Control. And we are in charge of the three individual sections that comprise uh, the people that will be on the ground at the incident. And uh, those three sections are the decontamination element, decon element. We also have a medical element that will be treating uh, patients as they're brought out from the site. And then we also have a search and extraction. And those will be the guys that will go into the rubble pile. They'll, uh, they'll extract the patients, uh, the victims, and uh, we'll begin the decon and the medical process to, to get those civilians out of harm's way and uh, ensure that no further damage is inflicted upon them. If it was some sort of terrorist incident or a natural disaster, uh, where specifically with like search and extraction where you have a catastrophic uh, heavy collapse, a uh, structure collapse or something like that. We would get, our C2 element would be notified, we'd be contacted, um, we'd all consolidate at the armory, move out and uh, the other units would be doing the same thing. Our portion is we come into the confined space or the collapsed structures we have specialized teams that will either breach and break concrete, whatever the barrier is we need to get to the casualty. We have special uh, people that are specialized in rope extraction, and we also have people that are specialized in shoring for uh, non-stable non structures. Part of what we do before we come in is we'll try and get a uh, layout of the building and find out what if, what, if any, activities were going on in the building, uh, how many people were in there. After we determine how many people were in it, then we take and we section it off so that we know what, for one, what sections we've already searched, and then also we know uh, we can section it off in the areas of the building that would be high use. We send in a recon team first. We have uh, PID monitors, which are the photo ionization detectors, and they will pick up certain kinds of chemicals, measure air quality. They also have to be sent into a void before we let someone go in to make sure the air quality is acceptable for our, our level of uh, breathing apparatus. Uh, right here, 
we have a group of people that are doing, these are our breach and break specialists. They have just breached a hole with the jackhammer. And they are now bringing out two victims from inside the pile. Uh, when, they, when they're brought out, we work with the medics. The, they will package them on the, uh, the hasty litter. At that time, they will be taken up to the top, to the, the uh, emergency decon point, and that's where decon will take over, and our guys will come back and try and find more. Our responsibilities are that uh, the 75 uh, personnel team that uh, that I'm in, uh, uh, that's part of the decon unit. Um, we have a six-hour stand-up time to get moving and get onto the objective. If we are notified of a uh, radiological, chemical, biological, uh, nuclear incident, um, we get our soldiers into the armory, get them as fast as possible, get them suited up, and we get on the road.